Okay. Cool. Well, thanks, guys. <laughs> Thank you, <laughs> Jason. Nice hood. Very nice hood. Thank you. And you are working on new songs. Oh, yeah. So that's cool. Yeah. That's exciting. <laughs> Not saying anything, but we'll get there. Um, <laughs> Good Luck has its own label. Finally, you are more recently entirely entirely in the independent yeah. mm -hmm. tell us a bit about the label the motivation for doing it should i start sure yeah you know we've been going for over 10 years now and and primarily i think as, a, as an outfit we've released music through a number of really great labels but i think you know working in the music business eventually you realize that as an artist um signing to a label while it can mean something wonderful for you as an artist sometimes it also can mean you're giving up a large percentage of of what you you know what you're creating and i think um yeah i just guess over the years we had come to the conclusion that we're the three of us we're pretty savvy when it comes to you know marketing our stuff getting our stuff out there we're doing a lot of work to promote our records and we're doing like, a lot of the work that the label should have do done and, did and, not do yeah. well, but as you say 10 years yeah you acquired the smarts yeah, exactly yeah. you get all the knowledge and 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 at the end of the day we were looking we were doing releases we were looking at it and going wow you know we kind of did 90 percent of the work for that song and we're giving up 80 percent of the, the royalties on it and it, does that make sense not really so um, <laughs> we decided we'd have a bash at releasing some music independently um see where it got us still mm. with some really strong distribution teams behind it mm. so we've been doing that uh, for the last couple of years on a great partner in Germany and things are going super well and yeah we've just started to kind of work and operate on signing a couple of new acts out of, out of South Africa. And That's pretty cool, so you're world. going to be a label, Yes. A, a, a label in the true sense, not just a label to yourselves. Exactly, well the thing is you Amazing. acquire this knowledge and this, this there's no point being selfish about it. You may as no. well pass Grows. it on to the next yeah. artist you can help grow. You know? And grow it, yeah. Um, in a way that is way more equitable for the artist because obviously yeah. being an artist we're not looking to be a label to an artist if that makes sense yeah you don't want to do what was done to you again exactly yes. spot on yeah yeah <laughs> you know. um and your your publishing is through sony agent sony Dino. Yeah. and was that was that guy henderson that did that i mean who, who did that deal? we initially signed to yes guy henderson was involved david um ventura was involved mm -hmm. And um, there was someone from South Africa whose name I'm just not remembering. Oh, no, he left. He, he left. He used to work with the Antwerp. Uh, you know uh, who I'm about. husband. Yeah, I know you mean you name. Know who I'm talking about. But, yes. And it's interesting. They they're doing a lot of these. Well, no, they're not doing a lot of the, these deals. They they're selecting certain artists. I know Steve Lowe has just uh, signed up with them as well. Hmm. And the, the 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 amount of work that uh, Sony actually puts into it is. I'd be refreshing, yeah. you know, for, from a publishing perspective. Yeah. They don't just go, okay, well, we're just going to collect and we'll distribute. They yeah. act, you know, they actively, they put in money and they, yes. you know, they yes. get involved. They definitely do invest. Mm. I think all publishers can do more. Can do more, to be honest. Like it's, um, it's a, frust I think it's a common frustration for artists yeah. that you, you know, you're kind of like giving them your music and you're like, let's make this music work yeah. and not everyone is that um able to make it work but i know it's tricky with a massive company like sony atv mm. um you know they have a lot of artists that they've obviously got signed and a lot of big artists mm. so like for example we were up we had a pitch up against the beatles and um no. i know and, 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 and you won and, and, and you won and the thing was no. we were no we were like we were like almost Confident. it's crazy because we were actually it was a done deal we were we had gotten the, the job and then we got pipped by the Beatles, but of course the Beatles also signed by Sony ATV. Yeah. So then it, you know, it becomes, and it becomes a margin war and, exactly. and like the publisher is always going to pick the one where they get the best margin and yeah. if they can sell the Beatles for like $2 million versus some little South African act for like $20,000. Some little South African act that's got 17 and a half million streams on Spotify. Uh, Just <laughs> say, you know, Beatles do that in a day. Like, <laughs> hey, what is it? Two or three. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, fair enough. No, no. It, look, I mean, it's a David Goliath story and it, uh, the, but in this case, David didn't win. Mm. But they do definitely invest and they are one of the better publishers. Mm. Um, and we're happy. We, we, we love the people there. Mm. Like, yeah, that's the main thing. Like, mm. to, Very passionate. It's about people, you know. Mm. That's what this industry is Imagine, about. you know, personality, the very thing that 
yeah, mm. that it, the creative sphere is all about, one yeah, would assume. Exactly. And business is business, sure. But yeah. I think without without heart and soul, mm. then you're just, you know, peddling. We're old enough, though, to realize that, like, we're not going to hold that against them. Like, you know, it's at the end of the day, it does, personality aside, the personality got us to be in a boxing match with the Beatles. Mm. You know? I mean, not many people can claim The that. accountants are gonna <laughs> are going to always win the battle when there's, like, Three extra zeros on the end. Well, what and what, not what would you have done? Be like, I would have gone with the three extra zeros. Exactly. Absolutely. So, yeah. like, you know what I mean? It's not like we're going like, oh, yeah. oh you guys are I such guess. assholes. We go like, come on, you know, like, obviously. Yeah, yeah. But it's it's good company to keep. It's like, great we company. We got pipped <laughs> by the beef, you know. We, and we let them we let them go because they could there could only be one yeah exactly uh, we have been getting a lot of writing opportunities from them recently though what um, from the beatles no no <laughs> from sony for Don't korean pop music for really? korean pop music hey, yeah K-pop. so we're getting like every day we're getting like three or four pitches on on like we haven't done one yet we will we don't definitely gonna gotta do one, do but they're coming in you gotta do it for fun you gotta do it for, i mean you know k-pop it's big beatles different league yeah, i know you know I you're know. talking about the exciting, part actually. of the first yeah. world yeah, yeah. sure amazing. Yeah. it's the new beatles i don't know <laughs> it not. is it is wild well, how, scale, well, how the music industry the... has like <laughs> has evolved and i'm sure like if if like if the four of them could sit down and look at it now they'd be like whoa mm. i remember listening to an interview with john and he was talking about how they'd been so screwed on their like on their deals mm. um, with, from both publishing and from the, the yeah the recording and, side. and and management and, and everybody you're just like, else you're like whoa like yeah that was happening then oh, it was happening then and, and and just egregious that it could happen to them yeah, but it also happened to elvis no, i mean his manager yeah, yeah. oh it's got yeah. you know that story i mean it was horrible nice. yeah. horrible horrible stories yeah. ones Look. where you just don't want to be in this industry anymore you, you know I think the yeah. power has shifted very much more towards the artists in yeah. the last few years, and that's been I really understand. lovely. There's just less of a pie yeah. now. That's the only thing. Yeah. There's less of anything to go around. But at least the artists, there is no excuse. If you work really hard and you want to be, you know, um, and you want to make money for your mm. music and you want to live off your music and you work really hard and you put the hours in, mm. there's no excuse that you can't make it anymore. Mm. Yeah, it's just to what extent. I mean, I think... It's yeah. just to what extent. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Because the... You know the market yes. well in the last five ten years but certainly in the last two pandemic aside the amount you know you're swimming in a Huge upstream mm-hmm. you know if you're a salmon and, and it's literally this vortex of water that's coming at mm-hmm. you you know whereas 10 years ago it was it was physical so you were competing for retail mm-hmm. now you know you drop your thing onto the spotify machine that's loading up thirty thousand new tracks a day minimum and it's like, hey, I'm over here. I'm over here. Like, You're like, we don't care. <laughs> notice me, notice me, notice me. That's already over. <laughs> yeah, I'm drowning here. But it's, no, I think it's it's an interesting, uh, well, as you said, there's there's loads of opportunity. Yeah. And the guys, I like with any song, I mean, some of the greatest songs have never been heard because, you know, the combination of luck and talent and all of those things. That, that Don't you kind change. of find it interesting that it's still like that? Mm. Because in the past, like, you had to get through this, like, this physical filter that generally involved people who would decide, ah, oh, you know, this is not a hips, you mm. know, so we're not, you know, maybe we record it, they listen to it, they decide it's The rubbish, algorithm decides and now. They, they put it onto their catalog shelf somewhere yeah. in a dusty basement in yeah. EMI yeah. Yeah, back in the, like, 1980s or yeah. whatever. Now... The same opportunity to be lost exists. It's just in the amount of noise, really. But it's in the amount of noise. But it's still through the filtering of people because, like, you know, if... if mm, but I have to say, mm-hmm. if it's really good, the cream will always rise to the top. Always, mm-hmm. always. Will, and, and, and if that's it's really, where, really damn good, it'll get yeah. there. And, I mean, that's, you know, algorithms aside, I mean, I, I read somewhere that, yeah, an algorithm doesn't have ears. So mm-hmm. it can't it can't listen. Yeah. So it it can't air ours. Yeah, I mean ninety percent of what you hear on Spotify, you know, is curated. So you know, it's like oh, I I played a Faith's track, so now it's gonna it'll pull you into my stream, which is really helpful mm-hmm. because now you're not relying on a radio program and going oh, I don't think this track is particularly good. The algorithm's going I don't care. She likes something with the mm-hmm. same beat structure. I'm I'm gonna mm-hmm. introduce that. So. The fact that there's no favoritism, it's purely based on volume. That you works, know? but it also makes your it also makes your Spotify like perception to be sounding very similar. 
which can also be kind of annoying and that you know like a, the old disc jockey would play a a faithless song and segue into something like in a completely Nine different inch genre nails. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. and yeah. blow your mind because you were like wow i yeah. didn't even know this genre existed yeah, yeah it's true um, it's true it's but i mean look it's not all we are. Doom and, doom. and then you no, i mean i think that that takes me to my next question is around doing the unplugged album it's like well fine you know us this way yeah we're gonna now literally pull everything out of it and then present us just with you know, basically totally different. Escom, yeah. powerless. You know? <laughs> you know, that's a very interesting point that the Escom played. Did Escom actually end up playing a point part in that? I suppose in some ways it may well have. Subconsciously, maybe. Subconsciously, it's like just like <laughs> taking the power don't, back. Don't rely yeah. on, uh, <laughs> yeah. on electricity for a little while. We so, what's it. your question? We <laughs> what was my question? What is why we did it? The motivation for doing it, yeah. Tell me, you can take this one. You know. Yeah, well, so it started with Jules at the piano doing, I think you were just in the mood to revisit Rum and Cola, but obviously the electronic version had been released mm. and she was in the studio and she was tinkling away and doing her own sort of new version, I guess. I was feeling a bit sad, to be honest. Sad inspired. Sad inspired. <laughs> and, and then Ben, I think, heard it and I was like, whoa, there's some, there's some magic there. This is a completely different take on the song. Maybe there's something there. And it was also, obviously, we were in the hard lockdown period. and You were of, sad. <laughs> we were sad. <laughs> no, but we were looking at, at things and we were like, what do we do? Because yeah. we play shows. I don't even think we were feeling sad, though. We were, we yeah, were so we busy doing the stuff yeah. that we were doing. No, it was it's just Jules. It was just Jules that was sad. That's why I came <laughs> out of Melancholic. Yeah, like, yeah. you and I weren't yeah. actually in a dark space at all. But like yeah, when we I heard that song, I was like, oh, my God, this is unbelievably amazing. Mm. And then that coupled with everything, we kind of a, we have these strategy sessions like, what are, you know, what's the next couple of months looking like? What should we be putting our time into? And the song came up and we thought, well, let's, let's record it. Let's do something very chilled. Maybe just do it here. Jules on the piano and vocals, very stripped down. And then we sort of like built the idea up and it ended up being a whole album of, you know, the Good Luck Hits reimagined. We recorded at a completely separate studio. We brought in a full band of session musicians and, we originally thought yeah. I was going to remember I said it would be like a two week project. Yeah. Remember that? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, because like, we never do anything hard. But you knew you had time. You it, knew. it could have been a two week. Because like originally I was like, okay, cool. We've got this like really cool sort of lead single that Jules has just mm. like whipped together. And it was like, it was exquisite. Yeah. In that, in its sort of initial, initial and, form. Yeah. Mm. And so we brought like all these band members together and we had them here. And we we were going to do like two days of of just like writing, mm. so like reimagining how our songs could be. And by the end of those two days, I came to them and I was like, Nah, nah, this is not this is not what we thought it was. Mm. This is not something where we're just going to be like, Bleh. Oh, look, that was pretty cool. Okay, everyone, here's some like little scrabblings that we like threw together during lockdown. Mm. And that's when it changed. And then we were like, mm. Okay, hang on. Let's find, I don't want to record this. That's, I backed out then as a, as a recording engineer. I was like, happy to do it if we were just going to like sort of scrape through it. Because uh, I could make it live and I could like, you know, just. And I was like, let's go somewhere where they know how to do this. I don't want the responsibility of having to handle the recording and the producing. I want to just wear my one hat so that I can shape this because there is stuff here that is like too special to stuff up. But it's interesting that it, it highlighted to me that you've never worked this way before. Mm. So your entire creative process mm. for Good Luck is fundamentally different to what... Massively. Whereas typically, yeah. you know, people start with a guitar yeah. and a couple of yeah. chords. That's not your process. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you no, know, I mean, the, the, the general process for making a song is you do everything. All of it, all the time. So there's never just like, oh, there's guitar. It's like you're progging the drums, then you're moving to bass, then you're laying keys, then you're like thinking up the the whole effects arrangement of how you're going to develop the dynamic of the progression of the song. You, Jules is right. Yeah, we, we use this. a lot of live instrumentation in our recording mm -hmm. and we get in session people all the time, but mm -hmm. it'll be like, we would have programmed the horn section and then we're like, okay, let's record it live and then we'll get them in and they'll record it live. So it's it's different. This was like... This was like the, there was a blank canvas and 11 musicians. And now mm. what do you do? Mm. And you're you throwing know? the ball into the room. Yeah. And normally I get to hold all the balls. Mm. 
and like if I don't and like and not to be like militant about it, but if I don't like something, like my job in the band is to go like no. You're a control freak. A little bit. Um, <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> but when you've got eleven people, you can't be a control freak. You've got to you've got to steer the momentum that is happening and is that's unfolding in real time in front of you. You can't shut them down entirely and be like no no no. You know. You've got to let it run. You've got to kind of let it run and then like let it run its course. And, and then if you don't like the direction, sure, you can rein it back in and go, guys, hang on, okay. That was so, the question. I mean, so Ben, how was it for you? <laughs> it was an incredible experience. Hmm. Challenging yeah, so. beyond, I used to get home every night and I was brain exhausted. Was my yeah. brain was just like trying to hold all of the sounds in my head at the same time, whereas on the computer, hmm. I can like I can let the computer just kind of do stuff hmm. and then I can solo them and I can mute them and, and I can mute. Like, I can mute. <laughs> you can mute, that you can is a big thing. Yeah, you can't mute, mute a human. Yeah. No. <laughs> That's what you're doing. That would be nice sometimes. <laughs> yeah. I, I, <laughs> you're on mute. I think also on that, it was like, I think you come from where you're doing everything, but now you've got these other people, but they were also very open to giving a lot. So mm. it was almost like, Mm. handling all these ideas being thrown at you which is a different problem to coming up with all these ideas to throw out that was the room. that was and the best part of it it was like not having to come up with yeah, well, you, you, you were effectively conducting mm. you were effectively yeah. conducting yeah. which i think was uh, must as you say the the process must have been amazing but then that kind of takes me as much as you know the the current album is current you're working on new stuff over mm -hmm. there mm. How much of that journey is now informing what we're what going to hear next? I actually lost that. That was yeah, too much so, for me. So, <laughs> the process of like working with a band and all these different, yeah. different musicians, yeah. is it not changing how we are like approaching this stuff? Are you listening Ooh. differently? Are you? I'll tell you. I'll tell you one. I'll tell you one thing. Yeah. Well, I think it's. I think I'll, I'll be honest. This album we're finalizing an album that was actually ready before we even started the up close album so this album is like was 90 percent done before we started um up close but yeah. i think maybe you've grown as a producer and, and all that but i'll tell you one thing it has done for me i want to do an acoustic album every single time you release mm. an album oh, absolutely mm. like i want to take i have realized these songs they're different people like different music for different reasons mm. and different music has a different place in a different environment mm. but one song you just literally strip it down and it's a completely different energy, different message, different meaning. Mm. Takes on a different meaning. The lyrics mean a different totally. thing, yeah. and like that is so cool. Yeah. And I think so. For me, I don't think as it's an artist, cool. I think it's important. Yeah. Because now, like, take Roman Cola for example. It's this really cool, like, up tempo, boppy little tune. It's quite vacuous, actually. It's like, oh, it's a little love song ditty, mm. um, with a catchy little phrase, um, and some cool production around it. You changed it into something that like makes Please. that make people cry, like that moves mm. them to the point where they'll rethink certain elements of their life, mm. which is crazy. Mm. Like, yeah. and that's what music actually is technically about. Yeah, I mean, but it's the same. It's essentially the same song. But it must be disarming for you because the thing is, in a weird way, you're channeling in the in the initial phase, and then you, the song's actually revealing itself mm. in a different way. Yeah. Don't you think that's wild yeah. though? Yeah. But it's, 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 it's like the craziest it's thing, like for Jules, yeah. especially it's because like, oh! she's birthed those lyrics, right? Yeah. Like the rest of us, we just sculpt a framework to go around yeah. them. And for her to then be seeing these like lyrics and then like, hearing them, for me, it was an insane experience. <laughs> I heard lyrics for the first time. I was like, oh my God, is that what that song is? You've never known lyrics. Jules is like, the lyrics have always been that yeah. Ben. <laughs> like... <laughs> Yeah, that's how many. Like annoyed. Like, these are beautiful lyrics. Like they've always been beautiful lyrics, guys. Like, <laughs> after like over nothing. two thousand. Yeah. Where have you been yeah. for the last two, ten years? Two thousand gigs, and he still doesn't know nothing. any of our lyrics. He's too busy <laughs> focusing on the things that are, he's driving just, the bus. I, I don't hear the lyrics. I don't hear them. I hear the melodic phrasing. Back I, I either like the melodic yeah. phrasing or I don't like the melodic phrasing. It takes a lot for me to like... I'm going to write about the weirdest shit from now on. It takes a lot for me to hear the lyrics. But in, in, in the writing phase, yeah. we do we, no, we, we do work workshop, very yeah. hard together. So yeah. it's bizarre that I don't remember them because I've been so focused on the writing. But you're a guy. You can only do one thing at a time. Could be, that. Could be that. Like Just it. saying. <laughs> but no, so you're not going to tell me anything about what you're about. So, what the so next no, no, I think we didn't really answer your question. No, now. you didn't at all, but it's fine. Uh, <laughs> hang on. Has it actually affected what we do? 
I mean, it must have. I haven't noticed it, I'll be honest. Like, no, I think it's going to just, we're just going to do more of the acoustics. No, 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 but that's not the question. No, that's not the question. Keep up. The question is, has that changed the way that you work on the electronic side? And like... Are you approaching it differently? Because now you've you've had a sense of the the, the, so the, the soundscape. So I like what you're doing with your arms. You're going wide. Yeah. Okay. So I can tell you that from day one of working on Good Luck, I came in. I always come into a song with the widest mm. breadth of opportunity to be available. Mm. So nothing is wrong. You draw mm. massively mm. with a big net. Mm. And Drives me crazy. Like. It, she she can't handle because she just wants to immediately go to like phase three with mm. mastering now. Yeah, just bring yeah. it to me a little nice exactly. box. Exactly, yeah. it's done. <laughs> I don't want to know how we got there. It's like, ta-da! But I, I'm going through the process of going like, listen, there are a lot of different ways that this could be beautiful. Mm. And I want to make sure that what we pick is going to be right for our audience. So that they agree that it's beautiful mm. and lovely and fun or whatever, you know, emotion they want to draw out of it. So the width was always there. Do you know what the biggest thing that I've actually drawn? I do know what it is pick the absolute best people whether it's from the perspective of them being a, a, an amazing human or an amazing artist as an, or music you know like technical ability the best is is just like not negotiable it's not negotiable mm. like i've never been good at suffering fools but like what i learned from this process was that like when you work with the cream mm. Oh, mm. yeah. it's just yeah, we, it just we, becomes fun mm. you, 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 well, you can relax one, a little you can relax mm. you can totally and that's actually the biggest thing that I got to do is like mm. sure it was like hectic but I was the right for less than yeah. I've probably ever been that you've probably ever seen me in during that process it was the most mm. it was the least yeah. stressful album we've ever made mm. irritating problems. and I don't know exactly. whether I don't know whether that is because of the amount of people that were contributing and the amount of creative energy that was like it so took the pressure off us as like a trio mm. you could blame somebody else no it's not you know, like <laughs> that but I think mm. more that you can yeah you can just you could redirect that talent at the reach. drop of a hat to get a better result and reach yeah. I mean if any yeah. if we were in a room and like half of the room were feeling tired and then like hadn't had a coffee for a few hours the other half were fine you know so there, there's just this like consistent energy um that we that we if it's hard when you're just three people making everything you know if but, you, you, but you stayed true to those original the the original the core of who we are yes oh i mean i think we we were we were ultimately the decision makers but being able to have all these people in the room that can contribute and that are like ben said the best yeah but they're the also best. creators so they would mm -hmm. was there not an inclination for them to go Ooh. you know that was i think the most beautiful thing about mm -hmm. it is that though. they yeah. showed such wonderful mm -hmm. restraint of yeah. like of the responsibility of what we were trying to do and then being um Rem like everyone's got ego you can't remove ego but they the, the responsibility factor was that they behaved <laughs> so like yeah. because no sometimes that doesn't happen you'll yeah, get artists still definitely. come in the room and they just like they choose to forget to behave mm -hmm. also there were there were artists and and like instrumentalists but like four of them are also sort of full-time producers mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah. they were yeah. okay yeah. this is not my production gig this is my trombone the, gig or yeah. whatever and they respected mm -hmm. that space but a lot of them actually i feel after chatting to them mm -hmm. joined the project primarily to learn from ben which mm -hmm. was interesting mm -hmm. like a lot of them wanted to see <laughs> how he does things Producers uh, undercover. Yeah. Watch out, bro. Like, so there was a no, thought, but, but it was cool because because everyone at the end of the day contributed beautifully and equally and like hmm. yeah and then and then, then when the decision had to be made everyone respected that it was ultimately Ben's choice. Well, it's our, our choice. Yeah, but you were the one hmm. deciding. I think that that's a failing though, within the context of the rest of the industry. Like the fact that these are artists who have are like. They're not new to the game. Mm. These guys are all collectively 10, 15 years mm. of like proper top range experience as jazz and session performers mm. in South Africa. And they haven't yet experienced working with a producer whose job it is, is to guide the song into being what it is. Mm. That for me is massive failure of mm. like where our industry is. Yeah. At because like, don't get me wrong, it's lovely for artists to come into a room and like, express their musicality in a way where they end up with a product mm. but like a producer isn't thinking about musicians he's thinking about the audience and that is like something where i could sense these these guys were like whoa he's not he's not thinking about like us 
He's not thinking <laughs> about like what we're doing right now. He's thinking about that mm. down there. Mm. And that for them was like totally different because it's hard when you're when you're a creative and you're a musician, all mm. you can do is be in the now, which is an incredible thing to be. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. I put on silent. He doesn't listen to me. It's fine, you didn't demand. Sorry. <laughs> one more one more question and then we're done. Um obviously it's um with uh, our current reality being what it is, I mean, mm. that for a band that's spent, what group that's spent the better part of your career on the road, mm. you know, literally on the road, mm. it, this must have been... Fantastic. <laughs> really? <laughs> you don't not, miss not, it? Not to be funny, the beginning of last year, hey? It was, it was beginning of last year, it was 2020, beginning of 2020, mm -hmm. we had that big meeting, Matt Banner came in, and I was like, never again. We did 90 shows last year. In 2019. In 20, sorry, in 2019. Mm. And I was like, I was so done. I was like, so, so beyond. Like, I was just I like, think, I don't actually I think, don't well, I let me just Let me just elaborate. Like, I think myself and Ben, we, we didn't realize that we'd actually had like adrenal fatigue and complete burnout at that point. We were both actually mildly depressed. And not that we weren't happy, we do what we love. So there's a, mm. there's a lot of happiness like, that goes with that. But <laughs> like, you, you're running on such yeah. high adrenaline all the time. Yeah. And it's it's very difficult to know that you're burning up because yeah. you're getting these boosts of adrenaline. You yeah. know? Such a good point. And, you, and yeah. we got to the end of that year and we were all just like totally and utterly I done. didn't want to see another aeroplane for like. Life. Yeah. You know, and so the lockdown. Boy, oh boy! <laughs> so the lockdown. Yeah, it, it I'm actually, just gonna drop this virus <laughs> into your glass. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, so funny though, because he did actually. He, he said that the weird thing about what he did do was he did actually pick up on it very early. We He's were not after, that good, okay? He, he picked up on it in January, it, like around the the sixth or seventh of January. We came through to the kitchen. We were in Cape. We just finished getting lucky summer. The bumper season it was yeah. our last show. We were we were exhausted, and he came through and he said, um, "Jules, have you seen the news? This this virus in China." Now, like four people had caught it, yeah. or five. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I said to him, "Yeah, but what? It's a virus in China." He said, "He said strap in." I said, "What do you mean?" He said, "Strap in. It's going to be a problem. We're probably not going to be able to play shows this year." Oh, so many questions, and Ben. So like, many questions. <laughs> <laughs> I Sorry. I, I and then think, I, you I did. Think, you I said, no, okay, you said we might not specific. be able to to play no, shows this year." What I said specifically, we were about to invest a hell of a lot of money into a new laptop now laptops like sixty thousand rand it's a lot of cash mm. you've got to drop on like a machine mm. and, and i just like, had I just this feeling i was back, like i was like please. let's just not buy that yet let's yeah. just wait let's just wait it's, it's weird and then i was like yes, and, then, yes, and then when coachella got cancelled <laughs> yeah. i only remembered that he'd said that to me in the kitchen in january and yeah. i was like ben how on earth did you know that? You just He's went like, I, him. I just want to touch your hand. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe some of like, it, that, will, that good luck will rub off. You know? It was very fortunate because we would have been, we were doing a very, like, financially, obviously, it's yeah. been it difficult, was like yeah. retarded. Yeah. Completely and utterly. And so had we made that purchase, hmm. you know, it just would have been, it would have probably been like, the straw that made us lose something else. And we were very, very fortunate. We like, we managed to like, Get well, you came this. out the back end, mm. yeah. so you had kind of you had reserves. We mm. had reserves. We just finished a, a like that massive tour. We'd been gigging a lot, so we had we we'd had a bumper year. We um, had a few lucky breaks. With, you know the Sampra thing, thanks Sampra to the Kiffness, they yeah. came out exposing yeah. all the Sampra royalty earnings that we had never mm. claimed, and we yeah. got paid out for ten years. Which there were little wins that we'd had that it helped us sustain. Mm. But I think the great thing is it's given Bitcoin. us a, it's given us mm. a break to actually like. It's given us a break and a, a little bit of a, a perspective check. Mm. Um, and we've been able to dabble in a few other ideas that we've been wanting to do for a mm. while. Well, that, it's and it's been that. really mm. fun. And the great thing is, now we're playing team, gigs. Like the whole team to have like, like Sham, Tim comes and joins the band. He like, his first gig in Shame. is K-Day. <laughs> so he gets like thrown like literally into the fire. But at this stage, I'm, also, I'm going like, this is right, the last fucking thing that's going to be happening. But I didn't really know. <laughs> like, like, three weeks later, they were like, <laughs> Everything is closed. Yeah, sure. You know? What a great way to start, eh? Yeah, yeah. I've started with that and then this handbrake. Yeah. Oh. But it's but you still, great, do you man. still remember that that walking out on that stage that first day? Yeah, that is an insane day. That whole like two week, one week build up for five days. <laughs> it, yeah, it was wild. You feel cheated. Yeah. Huh? So do you feel cheated? It wor it's worked out all right. Good. <laughs> I think no, but I think I think I think the main the main thing is that we've had like an opportunity to 
miss gigging. Mm. So when we played yeah. this gig on the weekend, Not two weeks much. ago, like, Come on. <laughs> we played with a full band. Okay, it was a bit special because mm. we had like 11 people on stage, which is a novelty and an amazing thing to do. But after that show, I was like, I came home and I was like, I'm feeling really happy. And like, again, I was like, oh, I, I this camaraderie, this energy, this whole thing, like, I, I miss it. I've realized how much I actually miss it. Mm, and know? everybody does. I so, think. yeah. So there's, mm. so I think it's been good because it's given us perspective and it's given us actually like the beautiful gift of a break, mm. a long break, a long mm. enough break, yeah. you know, mm. and, um, and also a chance to start up a couple of little side hustles that might turn to be something really cool as well. Because we creators, that's the thing, like musicians and creators that had lockdown i think there was two different approaches the one was like i'm just gonna wait it out and see you know and just chill just rest. and the other is like I, we felt this huge responsibility because we're creative people it doesn't necessarily mean we're just making music we're creative we're also entrepreneurial we run our own business we run our own band we do all these different things like how how can we use those skills to create more opportunities for not just us but other people you know so we've been taking the energy that we have on a day-to-day -day basis and plugging it into two or three different ideas that are like now starting to take off properly Absolutely. and so we've got that and then we've also had enough time to make more music so it's been like it's been actually really nice we wouldn't have had the time otherwise yeah I mean, like 90 90 flights mm. no it's more than 90 but flights. you also mm. realize like and everyone's mm. realized this when you're not making money you're actually spending a lot less money as mm. well so we haven't really like it's been a very frugal year mm. we've managed years. to mm. two years almost <laughs> she's wild no it's been a year in a bit. Yeah. 18 months. Yeah. No, it's a year. Yeah. It's a year. Give or take. Yeah, a year and a bit. It felt like a bit longer than that. <laughs> but I'm looking forward to I'm looking forward to getting back to it. I think for us it's just that we will probably be a bit more selective as to what we do. Which is good. And that's actually mm, and that's it is good. That's good. It's time. Mm. You know, we're not like we're not like twenty five. Tim is. <laughs> Tim's twenty five. That's why he's here, yeah. just to make you feel uh, like and it's uh, working. So. <laughs> Awesome. Thanks, guys. Uh, thank you. Thank you.